why is a raised to the power of zero equal to one when the base a doesn't equal zero? In this video, we will consider two justifications for this exponent rule. Let's begin by considering when the base a is equal to three. Three to the fifth power is equal to the product of five factors of three, which equals 243. Similarly, three raised to the fourth power is equal to the product of four threes, which is equal to 81. Continuing, three cubed, or three raised to the third power is equal to 27. Three squared, or three to the second power is equal to nine. And three to the first power is equal to three. Notice in each row, the exponent on three decreases by one. Let's see if we can discover a pattern to determine the value of three raised to the power of zero. Beginning with the value of three to the fifth, to determine the value of three to the fourth, because three to the fourth has one less factor of three than three to the fifth, we can determine the value of three to the fourth by dividing 243 by three. 243 divided by three is equal to 81, which is the value of three to the fourth. Similarly, to determine the value of three to the third or three cubed, we can divide 81 by three, again, because three to the third or three cubed has one less factor of three than three to the fourth. 81 divided by three equals 27, which equals three cubed. Continuing, 27 divided by three is equal to nine, which gives us a value of three squared, or three to the second power. Nine divided by three is equal to three, which gives us a value of three to the first. And then finally, three divided by three must be equal to the value of three to the zero, and three divided by three is equal to one, and therefore three to the zero is equal to one. And this is true for any base A, where A doesn't equal zero. And now let's consider some quotients. Let's first consider three to the fourth power divided by three squared. One way to simplify this quotient would be to expand three to the fourth and three squared. Again, three to the fourth is equal to the product of four factors of three, and three squared is equal to the product of two factors of three. And now simplifying, three divided by three simplifies to one here and here, leaving us with two factors of three or three squared, which is equal to nine. Another way to simplify this quotient is to use the quotient property of exponents, which is a raised to the power of m divided by a raised to the power of n equals a raised to the power of m minus n. And notice when subtracting the exponents, it's always the exponent of the numerator minus the exponent of the denominator. So going back to the quotient of three to the fourth divided by three squared, this is equal to three raised to the power of four minus two, which gives us three squared, which is equal to nine. So of course we get the same result whether we expand or use the quotient property of exponents. And now consider three to the fourth divided by three to the fourth. We know any non-zero value divided by itself is equal to one, but again, we could expand three to the fourth in the numerator and denominator, and again, simplifying, three divided by three simplifies to one here, 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 and here, giving us a value of one. And now if we apply the quotient property of exponents, three to the fourth divided by three to the fourth is equal to three raised to the power of four minus four, which gives us three raised to the zero power. But again, we know any non-zero value divided by itself is equal to one, and therefore, once again, three raised to the power of zero must equal one. So hopefully, looking at these two justifications leads to a better understanding of why a raised to the power of zero equals one. Thank you for watching.